is someone who's known her since her early days. Trevor Oosterbeek is a journalist and former activist who, like Karima, uh, grew up on uh, the Cape Flats. Uh, Trevor, thank you very much for your time, and I, I really do appreciate it. First of all, our condolences uh, for your loss. It is such a very sad time. Um, but we are also paying tribute to quite an extraordinary woman uh, who lived a very fearless life. I wonder if you could start by telling us when you first met Karima. I also would like to send my own condolences. I haven't been able to say to Mikhail and say, but he had condolences on the passing of this and my comrade. And for many comrades on the Cape Flats who are still, who were still in the last few weeks, praying and hoping and wishing and sending messages. And so they're all hard trends to that. While I met her when she was still at high school, um, I was... I, I just started teaching myself. That is 1980, 1981. We began to organize in Mitchell's Plain. I grew up in Bon Diego, but we met in Mitchell's Plain, and that's where we worked. And Karima is in very, in very many ways, but it's important perhaps to remember that she's a product of an era, a generation, a time where the Cape Flats in particular, and, and this is true for all over the country, but the working class communities of the Western Cape, I decided that they had enough and they started organizing. And it's in that milieu that Karima came to the front. In fact, they had a whole family, including her late father, her brother Zayn, all became activists and they became involved in the activities of the day. The Cape Youth Congress, of which I was the first president, Karima went in that same direction. And so, it is that milieu, that background, that made us what we are. And we, we were fierce. We fought apartheid. We were in the trenches. We understood very well what we did. We learned a lot. We did a lot of theoretical work. As much as we threw stone, as much as we burned tires, we organized people. We worked in the UDF. And we grew up as, as young revolutionaries, much of our youth was taken up by that. And I think if you understand that, you understand why Karima became the fierce person and journalist that she was. And I agree with you, she was incredibly intelligent. I first met her, I remember an incident in my car. Um, she was fully dressed as a Muslim girl still at the time. And she asked me and quietly whispered to me, I hear you're an atheist, is that true? And she was fully dressed as a Muslim girl. And so <laughs> I was quite astounded by the question at the time. And we sat right through the night in my car. It was must have been two or three o'clock in the morning when I dropped. And that, that underlined for me when she was curious about something. She wanted to understand. She wanted to know. And she will grill you till you give her <laughs> and satisfy her kind of way. It, and so over the years, yeah, it is... That's what we did. I, I just love that, that story because she was asking tough, probing, challenging questions even as a teenager. It, it is it's such a beautiful story. Um, you know, in her later years, Karima, of course, became such a, a strong journalist, very strongly outspoken, had very clear political views and she came in for a lot of flack. Uh, she was publicly vilified many times. Um, I wonder if you ever got to speak to her about that and whether um, she took that in her stride, because on the surface she always seems so strong, um, or, or whether it actually hurt her, because this is a woman who fought so hard uh, for freedom, and then to be at the brunt of such maliciousness at times on social media and even from political parties. We had one or two occasions that we spoke about it. it had, uh, privately, quietly, she suffered badly. She did not expect that. Not for one who, who gave her everything for that same freedom. And so it is very unfortunate that many of the political activists and the political parties do not really investigate the background and the history and the contribution of the Cape Flats. And that when she's in, and I will understand the culture that we engage vociferously and honestly and with verve. And it isn't the thing about disrespect. 
It's just the culture. It's just the way we grow up to challenge everything, to ask questions, not to just believe, not just to grow up thinking that this is how it should be. Trevor, and yes, sorry. It, thank you very much, you know, Shelley. So I, I wish that people will take a moment and reflect on that. Absolutely. And, and Trevor, as, as we close this interview, I wonder if you could, if you have one abiding memory uh, of Karima, you know, for me, it's her laugh because she had a wonderful chuckle um, and she loved to laugh. Uh, and, and you've explained that she, she grew up with a very difficult burden of growing up in the 80s in apartheid South Africa. Um, and, and what she suffered also uh, at the hands of, of those who were her detractors in her later years. But what is, what is the memory that will stay with you? And that is not a political memory, it's actually a memory of being a mother. And that Mikhail was very fortunate to have a mother like that. How much time and energy she invested in raising her son and being proud of him, I will never forget that. It shows also the full roundedness of the human being. And I loved her for that. Oh, that is a beautiful tribute, and thank you so much uh, for talking to us this evening. We really do appreciate it. That was journalist and former activist Trevor Oosterbeek, and of course uh, he knew Karima when she was a teenager uh, fighting for freedom on the Cape Flats.